Hello everyone and uh, thanks for watching. Uh, today we are going to discuss an open loop geothermal system called Aquifer Thermal Energy Storage or ATIS. We are going to start with a brief overview of the technology and then discuss some steps for installing an ATIS system. I hope you find it informative and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with a brief overview of aquifer thermal energy storage and how it works. An ATIS system is made up of at least two wells that can draw from the same or different aquifers. One of the wells is considered a cold and the other is warm. Colder water is stored in the cold well and warmer water is stored in the warm well. Depending on water the building needs to heat or cool the building, water will be pumped out of one well and injected into the other. We will discuss the mechanics of how a well can inject and pump in the next slide. Typically, an ATIS system utilizes hotter water in the winter and colder water in the summer, so the flow rate of the system per ton can be less. The schematic on the screen is for a cooling dominated building. In the winter or on a cool night, water is pumped out of the warm well and sent to the building. The building uses the water from the wells and a water source heat pump, heat recovery chiller, or heater to condition the space. The water that leaves the building is sent through a dry cooler to cool the water even further before it is injected into the cold well. The static pressure inside the well casing pushes the water through the screen and into the aquifer. This process reverses when the building needs colder water to cool the building. All ATIS wells will act as injection and production wells. To have this dual purpose ATIS wells typically lo look like the image shown here. When pumping the submersible pump pulls water through the gravel pack and well screen, which acts as a filter and prevents sand or silt from being sucked into the system, then goes through the closed injection valve to the building. When the well, switch when the well switches to injecting mode, the pump turns off and the injection valve opens, allowing water to flow around the pump into the aquifer. The injection valve is controlled by a small hydraulic pump located in the control vault. Now we are going to start to go through the steps to construct an ATIS system. First and foremost, you will need a suitable site to install your ATIS system. With an ATIS system, you will need an aquifer capable of producing the water flow needed to meet the capacity of the building or buildings it is supplying. Preferably, the aquifer is anoxic and unconsolidated or made up of coarse limestone. Other aquifers can be used but may present additional design challenges. Once a suitable site has been established to place the ATIS system, monitoring wells will be drilled or existing wells can be used. These wells will be used to monitor aquifer movement over an extended period of time, typically one to two months. The water in these aquifers will move over time in any given direction depending on the slope of the formation. In order for an ATIS system to perform properly, the groundwater in the aquifer typically needs to be moving less than 50 feet a year. This is because the system uses warm wells and cold wells to storm warm and cold water in the same aquifer for extended periods of time. If the groundwater moves too fast, then there will be more heat loss or gain from the warm and cold wells. We also recommend that cuttings from the drilling process be analyzed and classified by a geologist. The results of the analysis dictate the size of the gravel pack and well screen as well as the overall design of the system. This slide is during the process of air surging the well. This is done during development and is used to clear up the well water. Compressed air is used to push the water column in the pipe down and back through the well screen into the formation, pushing loose sediment out into the formation and in turn clearing the screens. This is done multiple times along with other techniques and extended high volume pumping until the desired water quality is reached. Samples are taken of the well water and will then be tested for turbidity levels. These readings will provide levels of suspended particles in the water, which is what gives the cloudy appearance. Once you reach your desire, desired level of turbidity, the well development is completed, and the ATIS system can begin to be utilized if the well also passed sand and membrane filter index, or MFI, test for suspended clay particles. Here is a good shot of the completed monitoring well. This well consists of three separate wells set at different depths, 
The larger diameter well screen seen here was used to perform a pumping test to ensure the aquifer can produce the amount of water needed to satisfy the building capacity or tonnage. The remaining smaller diameter well screens here were used to monitor the water table depths during the pumping test and later to monitor the aquifer flow or movement over time in the formation. Multiple monitoring wells need to be drilled to monitor the drawdown of the aquifer during a pumping test. This is an aerial photograph of an ATIS project at Fort Benning, Georgia. For this project, three monitoring wells were drilled and arranged in a triangular fashion such that the native slope of the aquifer, when not being pumped, can be determined. Knowing the slope and the hydraulic conductivity of the formation, you can determine the native groundwater velocity. Once the monitoring period has been completed, it is time to place the ATIS production wells. After the locations have been verified, the drilling process can begin. This image shows the production wells being drilled. The new production wells must be developed just as the monitoring wells were. Here is the completed ATIS production well, with a submersible pump and development assembly being lowered into place into the well. If you remember from an earlier slide, we monitored the water table levels during the pumping test. Therefore, we now know the depth at which to safely set the submersible pump to avoid dry operating the pump and damaging the internal components and impellers. This slide is of a special pump assembly that is used to develop the well. This is an image of an injection valve. The hole shown by the red arrows allows water to flow out of the pipe bypassing the pump and being injected into the well casing. The tubing you see in this slide is the hydraulic tubing which will provide the water pressure to operate the injection valve. This allows the valve to inject into the well when needed. The water pressure is created using a small pump which some describe as similar to a Keurig coffee machine pump. That pressurizes water from a small reservoir located in the control vaults. This is a shot of the ATIS production well, well control vaults, BAS controls, and electrical panels. The vaults mentioned on the previous slide can be seen here. This is where the controls are located for the submersible pump and the injection valve controller. This pit also acts as a connection point where the well piping meets the piping that feeds the building and also includes sampling ports, a turbine water meter to measure and totalize flow, and all the controls that operate the injection valves. On this particular project, the electrical and controls rack was placed outdoors in weatherproof enclosures. These can be placed in mechanical rooms or anywhere that can spare the space at your site. Two of the four wells on this site were fenced in to be more aesthetically pleasing due to their close proximity to the road. Here is the final installation of the adiabatic dry cooler. The cardboard pads shown in this image are an important part of the adiabatic system. These pads are saturated with water to evaporatively cool the air passing across the coils, which in turn drops the temperature of the liquid inside the coils. In a heating dominated climate where hotter water is desired, the dry cooler can be replaced with a concentrated solar collector similar to the one shown in the upper left corner. I would like to thank everyone for taking the time to watch this video and I hope that you find it informative. If you would like to learn more about underground thermal energy storage, please visit our website at udishub.com. And thanks again for watching.